Bi President Biden is keeping his promise by providing aid to Puerto Rico. Hurricane Fiona and Tropical Storm 9 to hit land. We have the latest on the storms. More than 1,300 Russians arrested at anti-war protests. This and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good evening, Portage County, and welcome to another edition of your Friday newscast. I'm Anthony Fariga. And I'm Sydney Brown. KSU's enrollment is currently down this, this year. Ooh. Okay. Um, Kent State's class of 2026 is the largest arriving class on Kent's main campus since the COVID-19 pandemic, with an increase of about 7% compared to last year's class. Some statistics with the, in the incoming class include having an average high school GPA of 3.5 and having students from 39 different states, Washington, D.C., and 31 different countries. But with the increase, Kent's total enrollment is down 2.2% uh, on main campus and about 4.5% campus-wide. Kent State officials are currently investigating two possible sexual assault cases on campus between September 14th to September 18th. The first incident was reported in Manchester Hall, where then police received information about a possible second incident that occurred in Allen Hall. Both cases potentially involve an individual who was a guest of residence on campus. Students were then notified of the case from a campus alert email Thursday evening and anyone who may have information should call Kent State Police at Oh, hello, all Porch County, Northeast Ohio. I'm TV2 weather anchor Owen Amador Gorby with your Friday evening weather forecast. Currently in Kent right now is 61 degrees. Feels like 61 out there. Dew point at 40% and winds is south at 6 miles per hour. Humidity at 44 and visibility at 10 miles. And as we look across our Northeast Ohio region, we can see Cleveland at 60, Sandusky at 60, Mansfield at 62. Worcester 62, Canton at 62, Youngstown at 60, and 57 in Ashtabula. It's definitely a cooler night than what we've had, had in the past uh, as that cold front from the north came in, bringing in us fall-like temperatures for our region. And as, and as we uh, continue to, to look towards your hour-by-hour -hour forecast, we can clearly see towards 7 o'clock we have 56 degrees. And towards 9 o'clock, lows will be in the 50s and towards 11 p.m. as well um, with cloudy skies. That's all I have for now, folks. In my next update, I'll be talking tropics. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thank you, Odin. The University of Akron is seeing a drop in enrollment at its university. The total enrollment of this year being just about 15,000, which is half of Akron's enrollment in 2011. However, Our university officials say that they are seeing signs of stabilization after consecutive years of decline. Akron's Vice Provost for Enrollment, Stephen McKellip, stated that this, with statistics of more application pools and more international students going to Akron, he feels that, quote, we feel like we're kind of through the worst of it. And Akron High School was put into lockdown this morning. At Garfield CLC High School, a hoax call was made to the Akron police claiming an active shooter was in the building. Police arrived at the school less than a minute after the call was found and no signs of any threat were there. However, there had been a trend of hoax calls recently. USA Today found at least 30 active shooter false alarms and threats were made to schools last week. A man from Summit County is warning others of a new phone scam that sounds very real. Andy Jalon received a call on Monday night where he was demanded to give mo the scammer money, otherwise the scammer would kill his mother. Jalon stated that the phone call came up as his mother's caller info on his phone and he could audibly hear a woman crying on the other brand, presumably his mother. And after calling the Summit County Sheriff's Office, he was told no crime was committed since that his mother was safe and no money was transferred. Portage County's expectant mothers will have to travel outside the county to deliver. 
University hospitals announced today that they will no longer be providing labor and delivery services, but shifting the services to Giaga Medical Center in Chardon. This decision comes after continued stress on employees at the national and local level. UH released a statement that they will, quote, remain fully committed to providing the very best care for expectant mothers and their babies. This transition will go into effect November 12th. Tropical Storm 9 is predicted to hit land. More on the story after the break. The College of Public Health at Kent State University prepares students for careers in some of today's most exciting health fields. Public health professionals impact lives by monitoring clinical trials, advocating for mental health, supporting active lifestyles, and more. The College of Public Health also offers open courses for any major, including its most famous course, Zombie Outbreak. Public health students can even study abroad and are encouraged to join the Public Health Student Alliance. For more information, visit kent.edu forward slash public health. Public health, solving our problems together. Kent State students have been living with mold in their dorms. After mold was discovered in Eastway Residence Hall, residents across campus have been filing for inspection. Our reporter Jacob Brooks talked to students living about living their, their living situation. What else can you tell us, Jacob? Hi guys, so University Housing sent an email yesterday that said they are aware of some mold and mildew concerns in the Eastway complex. So today I spoke to students on campus to see how they've been affected. Students living in residence halls on campus have reported sightings of mold in their dorms. Um, our room was just like super humid and like always moist all the time. Like our clothes were wet when we put them on and everything. And then we noticed one day just like mold growing on our wardrobes. It was mainly the wood, not really like walls or anything. It was just like all the wood was kind of covered in mold. And then we were just like, okay, that's not okay. So when did that start? Like when did you notice your clothes getting wet, the mold. Oh, uh, I noticed my clothes being wet like since the day I moved in. Um, but we didn't notice the mold until last weekend. But I don't know when it appeared, really. The university gave residents the chance to relocate so a deeper cleaning could be done in their rooms. We went to housing and we were emailing people, calling people, just trying to figure out like what we could do. We had people come and look at it. The issue has also gained traction on social media. This TikTok was posted by someone in Fletcher Hall. It appears to show mold growing on furniture and personal belongings. And the video has over 116,000 views. Even for those who aren't directly affected by the mold, they know someone who is. Just basically like that they've been sick and that like nothing's drying and like just it's like very humid in their room and stuff like that. So far, the university has confirmed mold in four residential halls in the Eastway complex, but we have received pictures of what appear to be mold in another dorm on campus. However, this has not been confirmed by the university. My RA talked to me about it and he was like, just like letting you know you guys are going to get this email, but like we don't really know what's going on. The university email says the issues are mostly dirt and dust on the slats of the HVAC units. The university says in less than 5% of cases, the slats had mold or mildew caused by high humidity in the room. We spoke to an RA with knowledge of the situation who wished to remain anonymous. We've distorted their voice to protect their identity. My residents have been complaining about headaches. Other residents have been complaining about headaches that I've heard from other RAs, which is a symptom of mold exposure. If students need help with mold-related issues, they have been told to contact University Housing. For TV2 News, I'm Jacob Brooks. Thank you, Jacob. In Washington, D.C., updates on Trump's Mar-a-Lago case and Biden's plan to combat substance abuse. Joining us now with more national news is Joe Malvin. Joe? If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. The senior judge in charge of reviewing documents that were taken by the FBI from former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home asked the former president's legal team to provide evidence that would support their claim that the FBI planted the documents. Trump has also claimed that it was his right as president to declassify the documents, despite him not owning the documents. Trump has called this investigation politically motivated. The former president's legal team has until September 30th to provide the evidence. And the White House announced that they will be spending $1.5 billion to help combat substance abuse. The Biden Amendment is also planning on hosting a National Recovery Month summit in order to celebrate those who are recovering from substance addiction. The Biden administration is acting in order to fight back against this deadly epidemic, an epidemic that has killed 100, 108,000 people in the past 12 months, or one person every five minutes.
Reporting for TV2, I'm Joe Malbin. Back to you guys at the news desk. Hundreds of thousands of people in Puerto Rico are still waiting on water and power after the destruction of Hurricane Fiona. Heavy rainfalls from the storm washed out roads, causing isolation to some cities, such as Orocovis. Puerto Rico officials state that two-thirds of the island now have access to water and about 40 percent have access to power. However, residents in rural communities are skeptical about the reassurances from officials with restoring water and electricity to the island. Hurricane Fiona left Puerto Rico without running water or electricity. In the immediate aftermath, over a million people were left without power. President Biden announced on Thursday that the federal government would cover 100 percent of the relief costs for the next month. The aid provided will go towards debris removal, rescue teams, water and food restoration. Tropical Storm 9 is currently on track to hit the Northwest Caribbean and Florida next week. Weather officials believe Hurricane Hurricane 9, this storm is being pushed by Hurricane Fiona toward the U.S. instead of being pushed away. Hurricane Fiona is now headed toward Canada. It, in an unlikely weather event, heavy rain and powerful winds are set to hit Nova Scotia by Friday evening. Experts are pointing to climate change with warming sea temperatures for the rare event. Welcome back, everyone. Now let's talk about the tropics here. As we can clearly see, um, as we look at our live radar, it is, currently, it is currently a little off right now, but that's okay. Um, as we can clearly see our live radar right now, we can see there's nothing to report. It is definitely a nice, gorgeous evening out there, for, to say the least. Um, no, definitely we're not dealing with like the hurricane-like conditions like that we are, that we will be dealing with sometimes soon. Or actually, we won't be dealing with that hurricane conditions. But as we can clearly see, let's talk about Tropical Depression 9 as it is going to be heading towards the, uh, Florida in the coming week. As you can clearly see, it will turn into a Cat 2 and then a Cat 3 and possibly a Cat 4 hurricane as we head into next week. So definitely the Florida Keys and everything will have to be watchful for that storm. And as we, as we look towards our homeland, we can clearly see temperatures are in the 60s, Akron 62, Steubenville at 62, 66 in Columbus, 67 in Cincinnati, 68 in Dayton, Lima at 64, and good old Athens at 67 degrees. It's definitely a warm evening out there, but not as warm as it was before. It's a lot cooler this time around. Um, and as we look at your seven day outlook, as we can clearly see, um, you know, sunny skies towards your Saturday, but then th thunderstorms will start to set in towards your Sunday with a rainy pattern occurring through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with lows and with highs in the, in the 50s. And then towards your Thursday and Friday, we will be dealing with cloudy to mostly sunny skies. And that about wraps up my Friday evening weather forecast. Please enjoy nice fall weather. Have a great weekend out there, everyone. Back to you guys at the news desk. With the approach of the 40th anniversary of the 1982 Tylenol murders, investigators are trying to hold a longtime suspect responsible for the incidents. In 1982, seven people between the ages of 12 and 35 died from an ingesting cyanide laced Tylenol in the Chicago area. Longtime suspect James Lewis has repeatedly denied accountability. He now asks investigators to look into the distribution company Johnson & Johnson, but families are just hoping to get some closure for the deaths of family members. Senate Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy announced the GOP's agenda should they take over the majority following the November midterm. The agenda is named the Commitment to America and was unveiled in an event in Pittsburgh. This, this commitment includes legislation like Parents' Bill of Rights, which would allow parents to have more say in school curriculum. McCarthy says the agenda aims to unify the divided Republican Party. Russian people are against the war in Ukraine. Anti-war protests have broke out across the nation in 38 cities with more than 1,300 arrests. Amid the seven-month conflict, military reservists were called upon up this week to hold annexation refer referendums. Outrage has sparked in Iran as police officials lied about the death of an Iranian woman who was in police custody last week. The father of the woman was told she had a heart attack and fell into a coma. However, the family stated she had no pre-existing heart conditions. 
The anger over the skepticism of the death has turned into deadly protests, and in an attempt to curb dissent over the death, officials responded with an internet blackout. Pakistan is facing flood devastation at United Nations. Pakistan's Prime Minister detailed the impacts of climate change that have submerged a third of their territory and left millions scrambling to survive. After three months of flooding, Prime Minister Sharif encouraged world leaders to stand together and raise money for better resources. The message? This tragedy could happen tomorrow to any country. The Super Bowl halftime show is getting a new sponsor. More on the story after the break. The Browns and Steelers went toe-to-toe -to -toe last night on Thursday Night Football. We will talk about that after the break. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Kent State football is on the road to take on the reigning national champion, Georgia. Kent State has been playing powerhouse conference games since 2018 with a philosophy that has benefited the athletic program. However, concerns with taking on such a tough opponent leave worries with demoralization before the conference even starts. Coach Sean Lewis states that he and Senior Deputy Athletic Director Greg Gloss are putting the team in the best direction possible. And now joining us is our sports reporter, Blake Deloja, with updates on Kent Athletics. And don't forget Steelers sports. What can you tell us, Blake? Good evening, Kent State, and happy Friday. I'm Blake Deloja, and we have a terrific Thursday night football game to recap, but first a look around Kent State Athletics. The Kent State soccer team tallied their first win of the season Thursday night as they defeated Ohio University 2-0. Freshman phenom Kelsey Silopek netted both goals for the flashes, one in the first and one in the second half. Senior goalie Sarah Malian recorded her 10th career shutout during the win as she stopped all five shots on goal. The flashes take on Akron on Sunday at 1 p.m. as they look to carry the momentum of this huge win over the Bobcats. Kent State Volleyball seeks to make a statement during the opening weekend of MAC play as they host their preseason division favorites Bowling Green Falcons. The Golden Flashes are 9-2 this year and are winners of six straight. The matches are scheduled for tonight at 6 p.m. and tomorrow at 4 p.m. Both games will be streamed on ESPN3. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at TV2KSU Sports for live updates throughout the matches. And the Pittsburgh Steelers travel to Cleveland for an AFC North rivalry showdown on Thursday night football. As Donovan Mitchell, the newly acquired Cleveland Cavaliers, gets the dog pound ready for the game, it is the Browns starting off the scoring here as Jacoby Prezet throws a missile through the middle to Amari Cooper for the touchdown, putting the Browns up 7-0. Receivers a lot doing, doing a lot in this game as George Pickens brings down this one-handed grab, and that's going to set up Pittsburgh's first score of the night as Najee Harris is going to punch it in on the left side. Tie game now 7-7. It is a Cleveland now. Jacoby Prezet, two-step drop, fires a dot to the middle, and David Njoku climbs the ladder to make the catch. And that puts up the Browns 13-7 because Cade York misses the extra point. Trubisky, a little play action. He's going to get it to the touchdown. He scrambles to the right side. 14-16 here. Chubb uses those springs and jumps into the end zone, making it 23-17 here. Last chance for the Steelers. They're going to try to do a lot of laterals and it's going to go nowhere as they just go backwards and they're going to keep going backwards all the way into the end zone as Denzel Ward jumps on it and the Browns win the game 23-17. That's all for sports. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at TV2KSU Sports for updates on all things Kent State sports. Have a great weekend. Back to you guys at the desk. Super Bowl 57 will have an entirely new halftime show. The NFL announced that they are partnering with Apple Music as the official Super Bowl halftime sponsor on Thursday. This comes after the end of Pepsi's 10-year sponsorship of the halftime show. Apple's music first first halftime show will be Super Bowl 57, and no performers have been announced yet. And Taco Bell is getting a new, are testing new meat options at, in Ohio, the meat A plant based steak. The fast food chain will offer the Beyond Carne Asada steak as a quesadilla, but is also offering it as a steak substitution for other items starting October 31st. Would you guys try the plant-based meat? I would! Yes? Yeah. I tried plant-based meat before, it's really good. 
I would, except I'm like allergic to taco, like milk and like Taco Bell is like old cheese. Oh. So I'm, no, I'm not gonna that. Do that is so sad. Oh. Thank you for reminding But I, I do, I would try it. I'm a big uh, connoisseur of Taco Bell's yes. quesadillas. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, that is something I will definitely try. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Have you guys tried the Mexican pizza there? I did no. the other day. It was so good. It is good. so good. <laughs> yeah. So lots of things to try at Taco Bell, I think, these yeah, days. Yeah, unfortunately, our Amen. Taco Bell does not have the Mexican pizza because it's all sold out. No. It's all sold this out. is tragic. Oh, yeah. My brother was so excited when it when, when it came back. He was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll care. Good thing I tried it when, when it was there. Yeah. yeah. And that is all the time that we have for you today. Thank you for joining us. For updates on all these stories and more, be sure to visit KentWired.com and follow us on social media at KentWired. I'm Sydney Brown. And I'm Anthony Friga. Have a great night and great weekend, Portage County.